Well, Facebook and YouTube fans of DX Engineering, it's Thursday afternoon. It is time for the DX Engineering Manufacturer Showcase. This is where we bring on one of our over 180 different manufacturers that we represent here at DX Engineering. Today, from ICOM America, it's the Senior Sales Manager, Ray Novak, N9JA. Hello, Ray. Hey, Tim. Hello, everybody out there. And Ray, a uh, lot of things going on at ICOM now. Let's talk about what everybody is talking about, the new IC7300 Mark II. Tell us about the features. Tell us about the radios. You were there in Japan when it all happened. Well, there's a lot of excitement at the Tokyo Ham Fair with the debut of the Mark II. It's also been shown in the UK and around Europe and a lot of excitement about it. I'm hoping to get my hands on one in two weeks when I'm in the Kirkland office so I can actually sit down, put it on an antenna and give it a good run. Uh, it looks like a lot of really interesting new features that I think, you know, hams are going to really find are valuable. Um, let's talk about, you know, the ability to break the antenna out for the receiver. Well, not only just the receive I.O. to put in either filtering or use a receive antenna, but the receiver itself has had a dramatic improvement. I think the spec sheet says 12 dB improvement on the receiver compared to the Mark I. No, that, that is great. And, of course, that's, uh, that's all about technology and the ICOM engineers uh, putting more emphasis on receiver performance. So it's going to be great to see how that plays out when you get behind it and start uh, looking at it on 20 meters, 40 meters, 80 meters. And uh, also a CW decoder. That's really nice. Well, before we go there, Tim, real quick, if there was a 12 dB improvement on your 7851 receiver, what would that do to K3LR? Well, that that would be uh, that would be better in-band performance. Yes. That, that would be huge. So those people that already have a Mark I out there, uh, don't be rushing to sell it. The Mark I is still going to be a great backup radio, great photo radio, one that you take out on the road with you. And the Mark II is just going to be that much better of a receiver. Uh, yes, CWD code is in the radio, uh, HDMI output. So you want to put it to a bigger screen, you can. Uh, the YouTubers out there, you want to show what's going, what you're seeing on your radio, just plug it in and you got an HDMI port to, to feed that video. It's, it's beautiful. I, you know, if you have a question today for Ray and 9 ja from ICOM America, make sure you put it in the, to the chat room. Ray, how are things going with the PW2? What do you hear back from customers on the PW2 amplifier? The PW2 has been doing surprisingly well. I mean, we expected it to do well, but the numbers that we've seen move, not only in the United States, but globally have been significant. Uh, the biggest thing that people were oohing and on over it was the ability to take it portable with you. So the PW2 stays in a shack, a 7760 head, Sorry, or the 7610 with the RSBA1 software controlling the PW2 and being able to see it on your computer screen right there with your logging software. Yeah, no, that's that's really uh, great. And, of course, you know, phenomenal life cycle of the PW1, Ray. I mean, how many years was ICOM selling the, the PW1? I would say somewhere between 10 to 12 years. Maybe yeah, a little I mean, bit longer. I, I think a little bit longer, and that that's a testament. That that whole uh, PW1 amplifier, very, very impressive uh, from customer satisfaction as far as returns and problems. Uh, really a, a real tank of an amplifier. Let's get on to the 7760, Ray. Uh, let's talk about the features in there. Well, the... The real nice thing for it, and we've seen a lot more clubs talk about putting a super station together and allowing their users to remote in with a control head. The user interface is the same as what they would see if it was a one-piece radio in front of them. 
the control head, the touch screen, the knobs, the controls for it. You can connect the RC28 for a second VFO. So you'd have VFO A on the front of the radio, VFO B right, right down beside it. Yeah, no, that's 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 really super. And the the display is sharp. Um, you know, the the receiver is great and uh 200 watts, Ray. Well, I used it at the Oshkosh Air Show as our special event radio. The body of the radio stayed underneath the RV while we had the control head right there on the table. So many people came by and was like, you're getting 200 watts out of that. We had to open up the compartment to show them where the rest of the radio was. But <laughs> um, it just made for a real nice footprint. And Oshkosh always has rain. The It wasn't that difficult to quickly put radio equipment away when the rain showed up. There you go. Um, Addy, Germany 6 Alpha Delta says, I wonder... How close the IC7300 Mark II receiver performance will be to the 7610? Well, it's not going to be quite as good as the 7610 because the 7610 has the Digicel pre-selectors. And those are the same, same type of pre-selectors that we introduced with the 7700, 7800. And it's in your radios there, Tim, that you use a K3LR with the 7850, 7851. Yeah, that, that Digi pre-select on the front end is really, really valuable. That's that's a great feature, and I'm so glad that it is in the uh, 7610, and it's in the 7760, right? But the 7760 has one benefit that the 7851 does not, and that is where you can run the Digicel pre-selectors with the preamps on. Right. That, that is uh, a difference that was made. Um Let's see, Rodney says, uh, I really have to consider the 7300 Mark II as my shack radio. The new feature set has really pushed it to the front as I will be building a backyard shack in 2026. So those features are really, really important. And, uh, you know, I think it, it's caused a lot of guys to get excited about it. Let's go to VHF UHF, uh, Ray. How about the product line and what have you done uh, in the uh, VHF, UHF radios? It, it's been very interesting to look at that market segment. And as far as the base station, the 9700 stands out by itself. Uh, it will look beautiful next to a 7610, a 7760, or even a Mark I or Mark II 7300. The new entry into that market space is the 905. It's the 905 not only does 2 meter 440, but you have 1.2, 2.4, 5.6, optional 10 gig. And at the upcoming MUD conference, we'll be showing the 24 gig module. Wow. Wow. What about mobile radios, handheld radios? Um, you know, what do you feel about those, Ray? Well, I wasn't prepped for a, a quiz on all of our products, but all right, Tim, let's go. For two meter only, we got the V86 and the V3500. Uh, those are great radios, great combination. Uh, just a, a little teasing of everybody. One of the things that we're going to do to the V3500 is we're going to come out with the blackout series like we did with the 2730. So the 2730, and this is first news here with you, Tim, K3LR, about the V3500 blackout probably going to be after somewhere around Christmas time. Uh, the 2730, we have both the amber and the blackout version of that. And we, and also the ID 5100 at the Tokyo Ham Fair, we showed a prototype of the 5200, but save your money for it, but don't expect to see it anytime soon. The 5200 is probably going to be at least a year from now. All right. So, you know, you've got, you know, I, I love this uh, 65 watts of the V3500. That is, that is I power uh, in a mobile radio. That's really good. Of course, it's, it's always a good base radio as well. But here's that, the 2730B Black Edition. Boy, yes, sir. That thing looks really sharp, Ray. 
it, the display on it is beautiful. Um, the, the, there's nothing against the amber display on the 2730. Uh, there's your 5100, the handhelds. You guys have got an incredible deal on the T10. Yep. Uh, analog only, dual band, VHF, UHF. We've got the ID50, the ID52, and the ID52+. Plus. Yeah, there are so many radios in this space that ICOM has, has got. You talked about the V86 earlier, a real value radio. Um, you know, so there's there's so many things that you guys have focused on doing right. Here's that, that ID50A. And uh, for five hundred dollars, boy, this just does everything at five watts. Yes, sir. GPS built in. If you're in D Star, you could do D Star um, simplex and see who you're talking to, how far away. So uh, for search and rescue efforts or just out hiking with friends, it's a fun radio to use. Well, you know, there's uh, again, you could spend hours just going through the ICOM radios that we have here at DX Engineering. And uh, of course, uh, Mark, uh, Mike Zero Delta X-Ray Radio is on and uh, he, he's talking about WRTC and maybe some some of the guys will be using the Mark II there. Um, we'll see how it, it stands up in uh, that competitive setting. And uh, our friend uh, Jimmy Cessna says, uh, ICOM is the best, I'm a fan. That's Kilo Bravo 8 November. Steve is on with us, November 2, India, Charlie, and from Germany, down in Bavaria, it's Delta Lima 6 Radio Delta Echo. Addy asks, is the D-Star mode as here to stay with the ICOM product line? D-Star, right? Uh, yeah, it's going to be around for a long time. It is a protocol that the JERL is the owner of. Um, ICOM, as well as Kenwood, are building products for it. So uh, it's it's not like it's a one manufacturer product. Yeah. So uh, talk about the uh, the D Star QSO party, Ray. You know what? You got me on that one, Tim. Yeah, the D Star QSO party is coming up. I cannot remember off the top of my head the date for the QSO party or dates. I believe it it will be a week long. We just got the information. Uh, within the last day or so um i think it, actually october 1 is when they launched the announcement for it okay well we'll we'll stay tuned on that one and uh and certainly there uh some notes on uh d star day that we had many years ago but all of that information is still relevant it's on the contest university files tab at contestuniversity.com and Ray, uh, when you're talking about support for radios that ICOM has discontinued, can you kind of just walk through at a high level? You know, if, if somebody has a radio, let's say they have a PW1 or they have an IC7600, is there any service or parts available for radios that are no longer made? So, some of those are getting, it's, it's difficult to service some of the products because the component manufacturer have discontinued them. It's not like the good old days where you could get parts for a radio that was 20, 30 years old. The only thing that you really had to worry about was, can I have my battery pack rebuilt? But um, as we were talking about Mark I, Mark II, there's so many people that come up to me, can I get parts for my 706 Mark II, Mark IIG? And unfortunately, those had bipolar transistors. The manufacturers decided, hey, we're not going to build those anymore. Right, right. So um, there's a lot of times that our hands are tied. Yeah, but, you know, but that IC706, even if you see one used, 706, the Mark II G, uh, the 7000, one of my favorite radios, they're still very valuable on the used market. Um, and yes, there are. There may be troubles when you try to find parts, but boy, if you've got one that's working, man, it uh, those are real nice radios, Ray. Hey, Tim, some of the magic of the internet and things like that, um, I'm trying to, there we go. 
We were talking about the D Star QSO party. There we go. So December twenty second, twenty seventh through January the fifth. It's right. not your normal QSO party. It's about having fun, sending images over D Star. Thirty winners will be selected and it will soon be up on the ICOM America website. I bet you guys will have links to it pretty soon. There's yes. a lot of a lot of information here. The website is on right now on ICOM Japan. Let's see, icomjapan.com of forward slash event forward slash DQP 2025. There you go. Well, we will definitely make sure that we get uh, a link uh, from our website to uh, to that as well, Ray. It, it, that's going to be great stuff. Our friend Mike Mowry is on Kilo Echo 3, Juliet Papa. Uh, ICOM is the best. And uh, Victor Echo 5, Sierra Alpha Radio. So Magical Soul will come up with an LD MOS conversion kit for the 706 Mark II G. We can only hope. Steve, November Alpha 5, Charlie. Good afternoon, guys. Uh, best end of life remedy is replacing with a new rig. Uh, words to live by there, Steve. <laughs> and Dave, Whiskey 6, Charlie Radio Tango. Hi, Ray and Tim. I'm looking forward to the ID 5200. Ray, any last words of wisdom here before we let you go? Yeah, next time I do this uh, yard stream with you guys, I'll make sure to identify which one is the exit screen sharing mode and which one's the exit the studio button all right that sounds good ray ray it's always great to have you on as things roll along here towards the end of the year and into 2026 we'll have you on again thank you for everything you do for amateur radio all righty thank you everybody all righty and thanks to all of you for watching today i hope you had fun with icom america and ray novak N9JA. Get on the radio and have some fun. Until next time, 73 from DX Engineering.